The trumpet, a brass instrument renowned for its versatility and brilliant sound, is a product of meticulous craftsmanship. Most trumpets are intended for beginning students and are hence kept at a reasonable price, but a professional trumpet can cost thousands of dollars. Even more expensive trumpets are made from solid gold and silver and can fetch an exorbitant price. But how did the trumpet industry begin and how are these premium acoustic instruments made today? Established in 1842 by Adolf Sachs in Paris, the inaugural trumpet factory marked the beginning of a burgeoning industry. Swiftly, sizable manufacturers emerged in England and the United States. Gustav August Besson's introduction of standardized parts in 1856 revolutionized trumpet production. In 1875, C.G. Kahn established a factory in Elkhart, Indiana, a city that remains a prominent hub for brass instrument manufacturing in the United States. Trumpets are predominantly made of brass, an alloy of copper and zinc. The composition of the brass alloy can vary, impacting the instrument's tonal qualities. The most common type of brass used is yellow brass, which is 70% copper and 30% zinc. Other types include gold brass, 80% copper and 20% zinc, and silver brass, made from copper, zinc, and nickel. The relatively small amount of zinc present in the alloy is necessary to make brass that is workable when cold. Some small manufacturers will use such special brasses as ambrons, 85% copper, 2% tin, and 13% zinc, for making certain parts of the trumpets because such alloys produce a sonorous ringing sound when struck. The bell is a critical component of the trumpet. Being an open end of the trumpet, it allows for the reflection and resonance of sound waves. This contributes to the rich, resonant quality of the trumpet sound. The process begins with a flat brass sheet, which is cut into a fan shape. The flat fan-shaped sheet is then hammered around a pole. Where the tube is cylindrical, the ends are brought together into a butt joint. Where the tube begins to flare, the ends are overlapped to form a lap joint. The entire joint is then brazed with a propane oxygen flame at 1500 to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit or 816 to 871 degrees Celsius to seal it. To make a rough bell shape, one end is hammered around the horn of a blacksmith anvil. The entire tube is then drawn on a mandrel while the bell is spun on the mandrel. A thin wire is placed around the bell's rim and metal is crimped around it to give the edge its crisp appearance. This thin wire helps keep the bell from collapsing. Then solder is forced into the rim, this increases the bell's responsiveness. Details like these can go a long way in determining how the bell ultimately sounds. The excess solder is scraped off using a scraper, and an abrasive sponge is then used to smooth out any scratches left by the sponge. Any solder bits still trapped in the rim are removed by further scraping. The bell is then filled with a soap and water solution and frozen at negative 49 degrees Celsius, freezing the water. The bell is then placed in a bending block. The ice provides crucial counter pressure, preventing the brass from buckling inward. The ice itself doesn't shatter under the pressure because the soap in the water makes it pliable. Bells may be manufactured in a variety of flare and bore sizes. The flare, which implies the widening of the bell at its end, and the bore size, which refers to the diameter of the tubing, influence the overall response and feel of the trumpet. A larger flare might contribute to a broader, more open sound, while a smaller flare can result in a focused and bright sound. Next up is the valves of the trumpet. These are complex parts that are made of several components, including pistons, knuckles, and smaller tubings. These are crucial components that enable the player to change the pitch of the instrument. A standard trumpet has three valves, each corresponding to a specific length of tubing. When a valve is pressed down, it diverts the airflow through additional lengths of tubing, effectively changing the pitch of the notes produced by the instrument. The knuckles and accessory tubing are first drawn on a mandrel. The knuckles are bent into 30, 45, 60, and 90 degree angles, and the smaller tubes are bent using either the hydraulic or ball bearing method, annealed, and washed in acid to remove oxides and flux from soldering. The valve cases are cut to length from heavy tubing and threaded at the ends. They then need to have holes cut into them that match those of the pistons. Even small manufacturers now have available computer programs that precisely measure where the holes should be drawn. The valve cases can be cut with drills whose heads are either pinpoint or rotary saws that cut the holes, after which pins prick out the scrap disc of metal. 
The knuckles, tubes, and valve cases are then placed in jigs that hold them precisely and their joints are painted with a solder and flux mixture using a blowtorch. After an acid bath, the assembly is polished on a buffy machine using wax of varying grittiness and muslin discs of varying roughness that rotate at high speeds. The final part of the trumpet manufacturer involves the manufacture of the lead pipe and the mouthpiece that is attached to it. The lead pipe serves as the initial entry point for air into the trumpet. Crafted from brass tubing, the lead pipe's design significantly influences the instrument's responsiveness and tonal characteristics. Manufacturers may experiment with different lead pipe configurations to achieve specific playing qualities. The mouthpiece, arguably the most personal component for a brass player, is usually made from brass, silver, or gold-plated brass. Its design and dimensions profoundly affect the player's ability to produce various tones. Solid brass bars are placed in a computer-controlled machine that meticulously shapes and cuts the bars into mouthpieces. The machine is programmed in such a way that each step, trimming the brass bars, shaping the rim, and creating the mouthpiece shank that fits into the lead pipe is precise within one one-thousandth of an inch. Soldering is a crucial step in trumpet manufacturing as it involves joining the various components to create a seamless and airtight instrument. The soldering process demands precision, as any imperfections can compromise the trumpet's sound quality and playability. A high-quality trumpet may take 465 individual steps to put together and is composed of 120 separate parts. Once all the components are soldered together, the trumpet undergoes a series of inspections to ensure structural integrity and alignment. Skilled craftsmen check for leaks, correct valve action, and overall playability. Any imperfections are addressed, and the trumpet moves on to the next stage of the manufacturing process. After assembly, the trumpet undergoes various finishing processes to enhance its visual appeal and protect the instrument. This can involve polishing, lacquering, or plating depending on the desired aesthetic and the materials used. Some players prefer the natural patina that develops over time, while others opt for a polished and lacquered finish to maintain a pristine appearance. This is also the part of the manufacturing process where the trumpet may be engraved. Engraving on a trumpet serves various purposes. It can include the brand or manufacturer's logo, model name or number, and sometimes additional decorative elements. Engraving is often done on the bell of the trumpet due to its visible and flat surface. The most important feature of a trumpet is sound quality. Besides meeting extremely small tolerances, every trumpet that is manufactured is tested by professional musicians who check the tone and pitch of the instrument while listening to see if it is in tune within its desired dynamic range. The musicians test play in different acoustical setups, ranging from small studios to large concert halls, depending on the eventual use of the trumpet. Large trumpet manufacturers hire professional musicians as full-time testers, while small manufacturers rely on themselves or the customer to test their products. Trumpets are shipped either separately for special orders or in mass quantities for high school bands. They are wrapped carefully in thick plastic bubble packaging or other insulating material, placed in heavy boxes full of insulation, such as packaging peanuts, then mailed or sent as freight to the customer. At least half the work involved in creating and maintaining a clear-sounding trumpet is done by the customer. The delicate instruments require special handling, and because of their inherent asymmetry, they are prone to imbalance. Therefore, great care must be taken so as not to carelessly damage the instrument. To maintain the life of the trumpet, it must occasionally undergo repairs. Large dents can be removed by locally annealing and hammering, small dents can be hammered out and balls passed through to test the final size, fissures can be patched, and worn pistons can be replated and ground back to their former size. Well folks, that was it for the trumpet production, from the start of a brass sheet to this majestic instrument. If you're a fan of factory processes, we have plenty more where that came from.